Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to have a match between Monkuki and Sharadan on Rooftop Showdown. Now, Monkuki, we have seen a great deal of recently, and he is a very prolific Vector player. Sharadan, on the other hand, not so much. We have not seen him recently, or very much. We've seen him a decent amount of times, but not that often. He is, as I recall, a fairly creative player, though. Anyway. It'll be interesting being that this map is fairly rush heavy, so what players do is going to be very important in the first few minutes. Okay, starting off, we have Monkuki at the east side of the map. Going for Vekir, of course. Shardan, west side of the map, going for Vekir as well. So Vekir, Mirror on Rooftop Shardan. And it occurs to me that it has been about two or three weeks since I have casted a game with Grekum in it. Which I don't know if that's good or bad, given how many Grekum games I have casted historically. I think it's actually really just more making up for things. Making up for a lack of Vekir. Well, anything but CISO Grekum, really. So, I'm fine with that. that that's fine by me. I'm, I'm okay with this. Anyway, Monkuki and... So, Sharadan going... F sorry, Monkuki is... So, yep, going for the Foundation Rush, as usual. Sharadan, on the other hand, probably not being as aggressive. No, they are not. Shin Tethvir forward, Zion Veer back. That is typical. Zyngir looks to be... Okay, it is going for five LCRPs, possibly six. I was expecting it was going to go for four and two with the starting six, but no, it's going for... Well, starting six. Six is more conventionally a starting number. It's actually... You start with three, of course, but... It used to be you start with none, unless you're Grekum. Now you start with three, but... Yeah, six is kind of this conventional number of... Six LCRPs is very typical. Like, if you don't build six LCRPs, you're doing something weird. Five and one, maybe... Not atypical, but otherwise, it's just a little weird. Anyway, center of the map, we do have a small fight, which Monkuki will inevitably win, because Sharadan doesn't have as many units up front, and they are the same units. But Monkuki did lose the Zion Veer. So ultimately, the attack here won't do too much. Shardon going for 6-2, and two, about half a minute up, which is when... Well, there's the infantry right there, so Monkuki's infantry are just about to hit Shardon's base. Shardon does not have any foundations to help defend. That's kind of a big thing. You want to have the foundations there because that helps you heal up. That gives you massive defender's advantage. And also you can turn to a depot, which helps out for the counterattack. Admittedly, Monkuki will be echoing this out. It's very unlikely they will continue along and go for a foundation rush. They've basically just been doing this as their standard opening every time. Oh, oh whoa, never mind. No, I think Monkuki will actually start building some foundations because there's at least one iteration where there is some free time which should do so. We'll see. Monkuki doesn't look like they're likely to do that. But yeah, it looks like that actually might happen. Because Monkuki loves to go for the Foundation Rush, but... Oh yeah, there we go! Found Monkuki actually going for it. Now, whether it's echoed out, we'll see. But Rooftop Showdown being a fairly rush-heavy map, due to the relatively small size, means that it's actually going to be more likely that Monkuki will stay with this. They won't bother echoing out, and ultimately we'll get a pretty quick game. We'll see, though. Monkey does have the first foundation up, no additional foundations yet. Enough resources to do so, but... Oh, no, there we go. Okay, now getting additional foundations. Yeah, there we go. There's the foundation attack. Now, Shardan, on the other hand, can kind of lure these units in, because the units want to damage the base. They need to go near enough to Shardan's base that Shardan's own foundations would help out. But at the same time, Monkey could continue to creep this in, and getting the root found getting any of the foundations that exist so far is going to be tricky. But Monkey is a bit in a bad position here. Shardan... Moving the units in a slightly smarter position, and ultimately would be winning that fight, but yeah, I think... There we go, there's that foundation for Shardon. So Shardon does have their foundation, meaning... It's gonna be, well, kinda up to positioning, but Shardon, unfortunately, moving their units forward, trying to kill the foundations first, which is not gonna work out, unfortunately. Shardon needs to re-micro that, this is a... Un this is a completely failed attack, and Monkuki, jumping back to his point of... Oops, this is an observer. Jumping back to Monkuki's point of view, back at the... 112 mark. It looks like... No, it looks like that is continuing to happen. Monkuki does not appear to have echoed this out, but it's hard to tell. Looks like Charnan trying to just nip it in the bud, however, moving forward, getting away from the foundation is a bit of a risky strategy, but it might just work. However, it looks like Monkuki is keeping a Zion Veer at home. There is the echo. That is what I was looking for. I was expecting Monkuki to do that. Though he pushed that foundation rush pretty hard, and he got pretty close to the Unpillable Past where... I mean, ultimately did cancel it, but that was close. I was cutting it within about 30 seconds. 
Though, maybe not. I mean, I mean, if you had a sign beer at home, it probably wasn't quite that close. But still, Monku, he does echo it out, was pretty convincing about how committed they were to it, but Charon, however, didn't ultimately change the strategy too much. I mean, a 320 depot, that, or 330 or so when it's done, depot, or 230 when it starts, that, that's typical. This time for the depot is typical. The resource processor spread is typical. Charon has not actually had anything changed as a result of trying to counter this strategy. Unfortunately, losing this Zion Veer, embarrassing enough to a Tethveer, but still, Shardon not too much behind. Monkugi actually is behind four LCRPs compared to six and one. Monkugi, however, does have a lot of resources in the bank, but this is what I mean. They cut it really close with a commitment to that initial attack. Now, Monkugi will be going for a bunch of Zion Pulsers, possibly to make up for this, but really, they have enough resources to do so. Although, no, never mind. Monkugi, this iteration, has built up enough Actually, even with that, no, they still have a lot of resources in the bank. So Monkuki, while slightly possibly behind, has enough in the bank that they can build up the Zion Pulsers they need. So ultimately, we'll be getting probably Zion Pulsers, Zion Turcher Wars, as is typical. So three Zion Pulsers for Shardon, not even going for the Zion Turcher at all. Monkuki, on the other hand, probably going to go for Zion Turcher, possibly pure Zion Turcher. That isn't uncommon because Zion Turchers do counter Zion Pulsers pretty handily. We'll see, though. It is complete. Monkugi doesn't have enough liquid crystal to build either unit quite yet, but getting a not getting three Plasma RPs does imply to me that they are planning on going for Zion Turcher due to the higher QP cost. Now, Shardon does have their three Zion Pulsers. They are bearing down. However, Shardon is a minute and a half ahead of Monkugi. Monkugi right at the end level past edge, getting that resource processor, getting that... Man, that depot's up. It hasn't built anything yet. Whereas these... These three Zion Pulsers, well, one of them, two of them are up at this point at the four minute mark when Monkugi is focused. Monkugi has not built anything yet, not aware of this, still, okay, getting Aerial Control Center quickly, so trying to go for the air counter instead, taking advantage of the Zion Pulsers' inability to hit air. I don't know if this will be built up in time. Probably going to go for Shin Pulsar, being that that is the fastest unit to get up, the cheapest unit to get up. But then again, it's also not super popular due to its general frailty. We'll see. But the important thing is that Monkugi has... Quite a few units coming in. Actually, he does have a Teth Pulsar coming in as well. So once the Teth Pulsar is... Wait, that Teth Pulsar is not being constructed at all. That, that's a... That's a weird bug. Huh. I, I don't... I don't understand. That Teth Pulsar... I guess... Okay, weird display issue. Doesn't matter. Oh, no, never mind. There's the Teth Pulsar. Now we're good. And actually, that's a great counter to counter. So, Shardon... I think has this. We'll see what Monkuki has, though. Monkuki is two minutes down from here. That's the only thing that Shardon doesn't have going for them, is that Monkuki is taking advantage of the past. Shardon not really aware of what Monkuki is planning on doing. Aerial Control Center is up. No depot construction yet, though. There is a Shin Turcher, however. Not even, like I said, Shin Pulsar is not very popular. Go over the Shin Turcher directly. Now, the Teth Pulsar is going to have a hard time dealing with the Shin Turcher, and the Zion Pulsars will not be able to do so whatsoever. And looks like a couple... No, more Zion Pulsars coming in. The Teth Pulsar is mid... No, is it even midway? No, it's not even midway! The Teth Pulsar has not been built. Or... No, it's not been built! Pure Zion Pulsar just going to try to kill this depot. Now, like I said, this is a bit late. Monkuki hit their point in time. 535 mark when Shardon attacks. Has the Zion Tulcher... Has the Zion Turcher. Sorry, the Zion Turcher. Shin Turcher! Zion Turcher would work too, but Shin Turcher works better. And also getting... Auto Defense. And getting another foundation for Bastion and for healing. Shardon is kind of falling behind once again, though Shardon is using this attack to cover an expansion. So this could still work out. As long as Shardon doesn't lose too many units, the attack well, the attack in one iteration does succeed, but won't ultimately succeed unless something changes. Because Monkui does have the Shin Turchers, but even then, actually, even with the Shin Turchers, a lot of damage is still being successfully dealt. Though Monkui is Monkui, and we will be seeing the Depot Micro. Still gets rid of the foundation. That's 65 liquid crystal that I'm sure Monkuki didn't want to lose. Not turned into a bastion either. Auto defense not being complete at that time. And that foundation does ultimately go down, but that's 65 compared to what looks like somewhere around 200 liquid crystal and about 50 Q plasma in Zion pulsers to destroy that one thing. Which actually didn't, didn't ultimately get destroyed, so a bit of a waste. Gotta say, a bit of a waste. Shardon needs to change up the unit composition and also group up their units. They need to regroup all their Zion Pulsars. If they're going to go for an attack with Zion Pulsar, it has to be a concerted one. 
However, like I said, they do have the expansion in behind. That's the big thing. Shardown is going for the expansion. Monkey was going for a lot of in-base Q Plasma. Primarily Q Plasma. There is a counterattack, however, of the Shin Turchers coming in, getting distracted by one of the Zion Pulsers, and I think that Monkey is going to just let that happen. Let the distraction happen. Try to get rid of the Zion Pulsers that they can. But this does buy Shardown a lot of time, which they are using to build more Teth Pulsers. Okay, good. Kind of hard to tell with the icons, I'm afraid, but... Yeah, building more Teth Pulsers. Well, building a Teth Pulser. They need more. In fact, they need Teth Churchers. They need air units of their own, and... The expansion has been spotted. Monkey, well aware of the expansion. Going for it. The Teth Pulsar coming back to try to deal with it. Getting Skip Teleport. This is going to take too long. It should have just driven in. The Skip Teleport is going to take way too long to upgrade to get to that Zion Turcher. The, sorry, Shin Turcher. The advantage, only advantage really, is being able to teleport back into the depot. But honestly, just get more Teth Pulsars. Just drive them in. Skip Teleport will take too long to research. This Skip Teleport here was a mistake. Outright a mistake. Which is rather unfortunate, but yeah, that is the case. And more Teth Pulses are coming in, but this RP didn't have to die. Like, that RP died because of Skip Teleport. And... Shin Turcher... Well, okay, like I said, does allow for the escape. <clears throat> Allows for the quick, quick escape, but even then... That RP... That RP died. Another RP died, in fact. Like, so, Teth Pulsers kind of going in for a hit and run. Not bad. Like, I guess you can kind of see where the, the Skip Teleport's there. However, at this point, that Teth Pulsar needs to actually get a kill in, because this entire expansion has been destroyed. No, or, no, not entire expansion! Being saved at the last minute! Getting saved. At this point, Sharadan would probably be wise to try to kill the Shin Fear before any further damage is dealt, but yeah. The expansion has ultimately been saved, or at least most of it. No, not even most of it. One of the RPs has been saved, but even then, hard to say. Monkey pushing very strongly back with this. Shin Turch is forced to retreat, but getting rid of... That foundation there, getting rid of a lot of the Zion Pulsers as well. And another expansion attempt over to the north, just teleporting RPs over to the north. Due to the crate being empty. And another crate as well, so Shardon's economy is very weak, and spending most of it on foundations for defense. Monkuki should be going for an expansion at this point, I would think. Monkuki does have the resources and the position to do so. But I think they're going to go for Gate Tech instead. They do have weaponry already, which... Really? Oh yeah, there we go. There is the skip tele that's skip torpedo, all right. It's gonna rush in here and probably kill off all these foundations. And there it go. Oh no, bad positioning. Hits the annex pretty hard though. I think he was going for the at, possibly trying to just kill the annex and just finish everything off directly. Though I think hitting the center of the depot to kill all the foundations would have been a better choice. But still, Shardon in a tight spot. And yeah, there's that. There's the explosion, but unfortunately did not destroy. Enough foundations really be worthwhile. And if he killed more of the foundations, it would have helped out on a counterattack. Or not counterattack, on a follow-up attack. Still Shardon able to expand around. Getting their expansion to the south, getting their RPs over to the north, and ultimately still has a stronger economy than Monkuki. Monkuki not having expanded at all. Nope, no change in RPs. Everything in the main base. This is it. Monkuki has no liquid crystal income. Shardon actually has some. That's quite a lot, actually. Six RPs worth. And Q-Plasma is still pretty healthy in their base. Of course, that skip teleport was still a bit annoying. But everything has been healed up since then, so other than the loss of a foundation, nothing has really been a problem about that. That was a lot of resources for basically nothing. Like, really, just a question of positioning. I think if it hit more foundations, it would have done it, but at the time, I don't know if... I don't think Monkuki was aware of these foundations. I think he was just aware of the foundation and annex and depot that were over here. Ultimately, did not do enough damage. Might go for another one, but I don't know. Monkuki has no liquid crystal income and is eight. One liquid crystal pull away from another skip torpedo. However, has skipped some of their RPs over to the south. Liquid crystal is back online, and we could see another skip teleport very shortly. We'll see, though. Shardon does have their economy up and running pretty healthily. Does have auto defense as well, and getting gate tech, there we go, was... I was expecting. Because there's a lot of liquid crystal in there, and honestly, spend more on units. Like, I keep saying this. You need units before you get gate tech most of the time. Although, okay, there we go. Shardon actually did get units, so we're good. He got units, or they got units before getting gate tech. So everything is sorted. And Monkuki, on the other hand... Going for an Inceptor? Wow. This has been 
definitely a different stream than normal. We don't usually see the transports, we don't usually see super weapons, and yet both these games we've seen super weapons, and in this one we see an Inceptor. This this never happens. No, no one ever has an Inceptor in this game. You never see this. But yeah, there it is, right there. Being constructed in a serious game. Monkuki is going hard for Inceptor. I don't know if they're trying something. It might be, this might have been a test, actually. Trying to figure out how well those worked. Against the south base, it should be pretty well. The Inceptor does have skip teleport. He's got 20 skip charges, but they take twice as long to recharge as most units. And this base is done for. Inceptors, by the way, do have a massive DPS. Like, around 20 DPS. And in case you're wondering, the number is per 5 seconds. That's why it's a 20. It says 95 on there. And Shardon moving into their forces to try to counter this. This is kind of... It's not quite all in, but the Inceptor is a pretty big investment. Grabbing all the crates, too. Actually, not even... Yeah, not even killing the expansion. Just grabbing the crates. Even if the Inceptor dies, the crates are done for. Hey, they're gone. The Inceptor will die, I should point out. Monkuki spent a lot of resources to get rid of those crates. Like, that's basically what they did. They destroyed those three crates at the cost of about 300, 200, I think. Double check. No, 191.54, right, right, Inceptor costs were reduced a couple patches ago. That's why I wasn't sure. Yeah, Inceptor and Carrier costs were reduced recently. And as a result of that, okay, Monkuki didn't quite spend all their money on that, but that was still quite a lot of money. And honestly, Shardin could go for a counterattack right now. In fact, Shardin, if, if they go for a counterattack right now, I think we'll seal it, or pretty close to. Although, no, never mind, the Inceptor has run back. Does have the crates, and in fact, has dropped them off, so instead of destroying them, has stolen them. As would make more sense. So Monkuki back online with their economy. That actually worked out pretty well. And going for another steal, stopping in the north expansion. Okay, now I remember why no one uses Inceptors, because there was a gentleman's agreement not to steal crates. That's what it was. Because that's like a bit of a broken mechanic from a lot of people's estimations. That like crate stealing is one of those things where you just go, seriously? Crate stealing Oh oh yeah, because there's now two Inceptor wait, what? No, 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 we jump back in time. Sorry, my mistake. There's only one Inceptor. So, same Inceptor as one that was over here. We just jumped forward in time to when the Inceptor had already been back to the base. But yeah, Shardon is going for a counterattack because might as well before Monkuki uses all that economy that they've been building up. And getting Gate Tech as well, so Skip Teleport will be available to these units in about 10 seconds. And then Inceptor taking a decent amount of damage, but it is fairly big. Kind of hard to actually do much damage to it. However, the fact that it is not able to use the depot to heal up does make a difference. But even then, we do have a large force coming in from Monkuki. A lot of Shin Turchers. The economy has actually paid off. Give me half a dozen Shin Turchers coming in to fend off everything. And given that Shardan had no Teth Turchers whatsoever, would have been a really good idea to have. But unfortunately, Shardan did not have those. So Monkuki has nothing to worry about. These Teth Pulses will die too quickly to actually be a threat. However, Monkuki instead deciding, yeah, screw it, let's just go for the expansion. Let's harass that out. Sorry, Shardon decided to go for that. Not a bad idea because that will at least slow Monkuki down a bit. Still has the half dozen Shin Turchers, though. That, that's still a problem. Not a problem that Shardon can easily deal with because ground units do not do the trick. And Shardon doesn't have much of an economy anymore. They kind of lost all the relevant crates. Teleporting away to some crates that will be relevant, but even then, the Inceptor is still at large and will be able to tear this apart. I'm a bit surprised that, honestly, I'm kind of surprised Shardon isn't trying to defend these crates. Going for the offensive instead. I guess trying to figure out there are more expansions for Monkuki, but at the same time, it's inevitable that the Inceptor will come to these crates. Find them, steal them, bring them back, and Monkuki's economy will be that much stronger. Because Monkuki at this point can stay in their main base even longer than they would before. And now we have the half dozen Shin Turchers moving forward, going for basically a finisher. This is it. The only advantage to... I think the only thing that Monkuki has going... Sorry, Sharon has going for them is skip teleport. They can attack the main base. They can tear it apart. And they could skip back to try and help out against the Shin Turchers. But Sharon is not going for that, however... And, like I said, not going for Aerial Control Center either. Doesn't have really the economy to support it. Just now building up the RPs to do so. And Monkuki way ahead for economy, thanks to the Inceptor. But it looks like Shardon is, in fact, going for the main base attack. Trying to just get rid of this while the Shin Turchers are out of position. And Shin Turchers do not have Skip Teleport. Or Monkuki's Shin Turchers do not have Skip Teleport. 
So they cannot move back. No upgrade for them. There was over Zion, Pulsar, and the Inceptor, of course. The Inceptor will be going down fairly quickly. Or, no, it won't, actually. The Inceptor not taking enough direct damage. The Teth Beer is doing what they can to deal with it, but they won't survive more than three shots. No, two shots, actually. I think the Zion Pulsars won't survive much either. And Monkuki back at the 1706 mark. Moving back all their Shinturks to deal with this. Stopping the attack, and I think this is going to be game. Shardan might try something else on after this. Trying a Slipgate. Getting a Slipgate probably go maybe for Chronoporting, because... At this point, Shardan basically needs to skip all the units back, Chronoport, and then hope for the best. But honestly, ground units... Ground anti-air against air anti-ground doesn't work especially well in this game. Uh, okay, it does for cost, but... This is not cost. This is three Teth Pulsers. They're not going to be able to win against six Zion Turchers. Sorry, six Shin Turchers. Or Zion Turchers, actually, either way. And there's the Steel. There's the Crate Steel getting rid of all those crates. Like I said, inevitable this would happen. The Inceptor grabs them all. And Monkuki has just more of the map in their base. Sometimes I wonder about the Crate Steel mechanic, honestly. It just doesn't really make sense to me. But anyway, that is... That's how that works. Monkey stays in their base place, one base with an Inceptor. If that Inceptor goes down, that makes a big difference. But at the same time, Monkey could just buy another one. And we do have a Chronoport. A couple units being Chronoported back. Yeah, this isn't going to do much. Chardon has lost the game. If they went for air units, built up a few, quite a few Teth Churchers, like half a dozen Teth Churchers, and went in with, or even three or four Teth Churchers, and went in with those, that would do it. That would bring them back in this game. Although they might have to build an Inceptor of their own. But yeah, if they got rid of this base, all the resources are at this base. So if they destroy it, the base, like get rid of the areas that are in the way... Okay, that would just win the game outright, but... Well, that would win the game outright, so that's perfect! That's exactly what they want! That worked out perfectly, but Charnan, however, is not doing that. Instead, going for an uppercut. Which dealt more damage to them than it did to Monkuki. So, Monkuki is still in a great position right now, and I think Shardan might be realizing this. I don't see any way Shardan has to get out of this. Monkuki... Yeah, Monkuki's doing fine. And going for Slipkit of their own has gotten Gaytech. So, Shardan has lost the only advantage they have. And this, by the way, is about two minutes down from where Shardan is. Shardan at the 21 minute mark. Actually, jumped down to the 19, but... Monkuki at the 20 minute mark, going down to the 19, 16 mark as well. And has all the resources. All of the resources. Oh, except for the ones in the north. That that they don't have. But everything else, yeah. Everything else has been stolen. Oh, and these empty crates. They didn't bother to steal the empty crates. Completion is sake, really. That's the only reason you bother. But yeah, going for the north crates right now. Monkuki grabbing those two. Everything must go to Monkuki. Shardon has no economy left to speak of. However, Shardon going for one last dish attempt. This is... Looks like possibly another Chronoport attack, but it doesn't even matter. Deals no damage whatsoever. Shardon, yeah, it looks like that was a Chronoport attack. Did nothing. Arianas would... That's all you could really do with this many Shinturchers. Either just spam out the Teth Pulsars, which... It's kind of hard to do. Or get a few Teth Churchers, because... Honestly, Teth Churchers are the most efficient solution. Shin Shinturchers can't hit air that efficiently. The downside to Teth Churchers is that, of course, your opponent could get Teth Churchers or get Teth Pulsars, and then... It becomes more of a triangle, but when they're spamming out Shin Turchers, getting three or four Teth Turchers is a fairly safe investment to destroy everything they have. Especially with the Inceptor here. To get rid of all that stuff... Actually, the Inceptor might mean five or six Teth Turchers, but still. Get rid of all that stuff, turn up on the main base, you win. But unfortunately, that didn't happen, and Shardon has instead lost. Doesn't quite know yet, but... Okay, probably realizes... They probably realize it. I mean, there's no resources in the map. Everything west of this line here, of the western edge of Monkuki's base, has been taken over. I mean, even the north. Monkuki's just playing it safe. Grabbing the north expansion as well. Everything but what Monkuki has already directly expanded to has been stolen. Is in Monkuki's base. Monkuki quite literally has all of the... Oh, never mind. Not these two crates. All the resources except for this QB crate and these two QB crates. Because we're back at the 18 minute mark. But when Monkuki was focusing... Before, where still Monkey's point of view. In the playable past, there's only this one crate left. And let's go back to the present. Yeah, this is the only crate left in the present. But still, that's it. I'm a bit surprised Shardon has not actually just thrown in the towel at this point, because there's. Shardon has no units. 
Wait, wait what? What's Sharon waiting for? I, I honestly don't know. I think they're just chatting at this point. So yeah, that. Well, an attempt at Teth Pulsar, but that's gonna do nothing. Yeah, Teth Pulsar here gets destroyed. Doesn't really matter. The Inceptor steals everything, and that's it. There we go. Sharon throws in the towel, or has been destroyed. No, just throws in the towel. That was game. Weird game. I did not expect to see that at all. Like that that took me by surprise. I have not seen Inceptors in a long time because, like I said, gentlemen's agreement about the crate stealing, which Mon Cookie either forgot about or just decided to outright ignore, or they're just testing it to see if it was possible to stop and if the gentleman's agreement was necessary, and that test was not promising, though also inconclusive. If Shardon had built air units, if he had built an aerial control center, built some Teth Churchers, the game would have lasted longer, probably played out differently. There were some windows when Shardon could have basically taken the game with a few Teth Churchers. Those did not come up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and that will be it for me tonight. So thank you guys for watching, and have a good night, everyone.